Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. It is Friday, July the 7th, 2017. Now, first of all, before we start, tonight we were supposed to be doing a simulcast broadcasting live on YouTube and on Facebook Live at the exact same time, but that didn't become possible because a meeting that is important to the show ran late. Um, so, Tomorrow night, which is Saturday night, where we normally don't have a show, we're going to beta test. Sometime tomorrow, it's not even 8 o'clock. We're going to beta test the YouTube live. And the, and the reason this is so important is because people complain that the video feed still sticks sometimes. And a lot of that may have to do with the fact that our broadcast is wireless. And we can't get around that now on Facebook live. But for the YouTube live, we can hardwire straight to the modem and we have 120 mbs from flow and hardwiring straight to the modem on a youtube if we get no stick on that then we would know because the team um have been working very hard at putting together equipment and programs and this week coming here they actually coming into where i do the show and put things in place so that we will be broadcasting. It's going to get a little complicated, I assume, for me. Uh, but we're going to be broadcasting on Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, simultaneously with one hardwire device. So I'm waiting for all of that. Today is Friday, 7th of July, 2017. Next thing I want to address before we go into the show is this. There is an ongoing debate as to whether Philip should use industrial language in his videos or not. Now, to many people who are incensed by what goes on in government, opposition, public offices, they're so incensed that they want to vent and they like the vent and they like the industrial language of the vent. However, for some reason, this live show is big family entertainment for a lot of people. And they watch it, whole family, mother, father, granny, grandpa, children, everybody. And apparently, and good night to all of you, apparently it has a big following as a family show. Now, I didn't expect that because I didn't expect the live video to be lasting this long, to be honest. So we've, we've all been learning as we go. But I understand that I have a responsibility to all of my viewers and to all of the citizens of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So, as hard as it is going to be to do, I am not going to be using industrial language anymore. Last week I had a show and I had a prop and I had a fork and everybody went to town on that. Um, some of these things anger me though. I mean, tonight is the Ramayan for Vidish, who was, I mean, that, that poor little fella. I, and I sent a message because the family spoke to me again, invited me today, and I said, I wanna come. I wanna know when the, the mom, especially, when she's open to, to talking to strangers, because I'm a stranger to the family. But like the rest of the trend today, with that little boy, I feel like he's part of my family, and, and it, 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 it hurt. And, to talk about things like that and not cuss, I don't know how you all do it, eh? but this is my position here. We are going to respect, and we're gonna lead from in front. We're gonna lead from in front. We could argue, we could defend our right, we could say Facebook, <laughs> we could say Facebook is not for Charan, but it's not, they're not using it as Facebook. They're jacking it into their television and they're watching it like a home show. So eight to nine, Monday to Friday, I mean last night, my day yesterday started five o'clock in the morning and last night I was literally running on fumes and I'm begging off with members of my family and close friends who I'm expecting to say, yes, they're, they're paying you for that, take a break. Everybody says no. Everybody says you have a commitment. You have an important show. People want to see it. So, and they said, you came on and you were in a suit. Somebody just told me, I saw you in a suit and tie. And I said, right. Look, my prime minister. And then you start a cuss. So, 
from today we have to stick a real pin in the cussing. But if you look at the name of this video, Political Noise, Kamla Pasad B. Sessa, Keith Rowley, and Stuart Young, those three, I have some information to put in the public space as to the gangsterism taking place by these elected public officials. And really and truly, if I get through this without cussing, I'll be proud of myself. Anyway, let's go in. Please share the video. Let everybody know we are. When we share the video, the numbers go up. Share it now, please. Thank you. Trinidad burned down and living in the ashes. That is me. I have nowhere to go. I'm, I'm more mixed up than anybody. I have every race in me and I'm happy for that. This is the only country that I want to call home. If Trinidad burned down, I live in the ashes. music for too long. That's something else I want to say. We have a team of people in the Progressive Empowerment Party. Dilworth, Ali G, David Ramjohn, Felicia, Giselle, Lima, Sarah, Gabriel, Dave, Karen. I don't want to forget any, Raphael, I don't want to forget anybody. We have Vanessa. We have a team of people in the Progressive Empowerment Party, second and none. Anthony, Harry, Ian, Anne-Marie. Um, I don't want to forget any anybody. I didn't want to start calling names because there's so many people, but I want to tell you something. These people are doing so much, so much work with such little resources. Today, the ex-Senate president tell me, I, he tell me, he said, I can't believe what are you doing in six months? I said, me? I said, that team? He said, well, I mean that. Gary Griffith tell me, he said, he said, my wife running for leader COP and all you blow away COP. It's not me. As make, as make the videos, as do the talking. And when you come to public meetings, or when you come to the Saturday meetings at 19 Stanmore Avenue, at noon, you meet the whole team. And what I see happen on a Saturday is that people feel at home one time because it's that kind of atmosphere it's open sharing you know and all the people who like to bring roti doubles mango whatever they bring in for me i love you bad i grow up so so don't feel a licorice if you bring in i take in yeah i grow up just so that's how we grow up if you're avocado tree bearing everybody eating avocado so i know that last week i said I gave you all the whole story about going down Debe, and we passed Hassan Ali Greenshed 
And I didn't get to stop to get my pies. I say, I need to be stop by Arsenal. And they say, on the way back, we will stop. So I say, cool. And on the way back, they take a shortcut that bypass the doubles district. So I get no pie. You know, Saturday, and I talk about that in a video. You know, Saturday, I get Sahina and Alupai with Chana. They didn't bring any bygani for me, and I was a little bit mortified because that's what I go there for. But let me tell you, that's my thing. Bygan pie, chana, mango, pepper, go to that. And there's a big up for Hassan Ali Green Shed. Yeah? All of the best doubles in Trinidad, and all people who want to argue with me, let me tell you something. I have a curry mountain. Yeah? They have a lady who sells doubles. Now, I'm going to tell you all this, and it will cause a stampede and a line because that's what happens. But I have a lady who sells doubles in Diego Martin of all places, in Starlight Shopping Plaza of all places, opposite Royal Bank with a purple tent. She, her barrow is not like this fax paper barrow you're getting on the avenue. I don't know what that is. People calling that doubles. That's not doubles. That impersonating a doubles. A double supposed to have some, some form and some bite back. And, and, and again, on the avenue, that is chana soup. That is not chana. When you go and get chana in your doubles from this woman, you could count your individual grains of chana in your doubles. And that is the real thing. And her pepper, her pepper, she has pepper that could strip paint off her battleship. So slight, tell her real slight. And she's mixing up nice fair inside the thing. Go by that woman and tell her Philip Alexander Senior. She has pies and she has doubles. And she sell out quick. She's go there on her morning from about half past seven. Best doubles in Trinidad. The best roti in Trinidad was a lady in Karapichaima. But she closed down. And I thought, and I used to tell Trinidad, because I tell people all the time about this lady in Karapichaima and her roti and how perfect her roti was. And, um, and I thought, they, they had this rumor that her husband had left her. But I found out her husband died. And I didn't know that, so I had to apologize. Because... I met her daughter and they sent homemade roti for me and reminded me why this woman's roti. But she migrated, so we've lost a national treasure. So now, the best roti in Trinidad, Barnon, Santa Cruz, between the police station and the fire station, which is where we're having our meeting next week, Saturday. Toot Bagai, Roti Cafe, the best roti in Trinidad. The best, best, best. And all this Mona, some Marabella, and all this highway roti and thing. And I see that Northerners, somebody make a, 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 a video, they're Northerners, slowly roll, eh? Santa Cruz Roti is the best. The only thing, and I know Sharon, Sharon from, from Roti Cafe, she's watched the videos. Sharon, I keep telling you, put Bodhi on the menu. The only thing that, that they're missing, because get Jackie Jackie, tell Glenn Leanza who opened best roti on Mokorapa Road. I tell Glenn, I say, Glenn, you can't be operating a roti shop and don't have Bodhi, and he went and put Bodhi on the menu. You gotta give Jackie Jacket and Jimmy's Jim Boots. Sharon, please. That's all you're missing. Put Bodhi on the menu. Yeah? Right. And the reason I was telling you all of this about the food, because you wouldn't believe this one. And on a Friday evening, so I just had a meeting. And I had a meeting there. On the corner of Carlos Street and Robert Street in Woodbrook, the opposite Brooklyn Bar, which is a landmark. So if you're from Trinidad, Brooklyn Bar there about a hundred years. And if you're from Woodbrook at all, you know what I'm talking about. Obliquely across the road on the next corner, there's a place that used to be called Barking Dogs. Well, it's no longer Barking Dogs. It is becoming a Chinese restaurant. Now, I can't eat, I can't eat MSG. I get headaches. So I found out this place is there and they make Chinese food and the man tell me, say, MSG is for people who can't cook. Well, boy, Every Friday, if I could, I did. I did. And I, and I was just there. Don't tell me. Shrimp and lap chong, fried rice, chasu pork, Chinese chicken, roast pork. If you see food, $160. $160. And the word spreading normally because you can't get a seat in the place. Can't get a seat in the place. And you see that, you will never, ever hear me supporting a foreign franchise again. Maria's Bakery, they see me every day. Leale Cafe in Starlight Shopping Plaza at the back, Turkish Coffee Shop, they see me. I want to support all, 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 all small businesses. My, I, but I, 
I am a bachelor, so I wash my clothes, I take it to, to clean right the iron, they do a good job for me. I was happy they blew up last year and now they build it back. I'm giving you a lot of information. But what I would like to encourage Trinidadians to do now is to make our economy work at our level. If it's foreign and they have a local alternative, blank be foreign. Straight up. Straight up. Amir Mohammed said, but they're closing down. Leali may or may not be closing down. It's for sale. My boy gets a big contract, so he can't do both. I know. But um, Maria's Bakery. Maria's Bakery, believe it or not, Syrian people, the best corn soup in Trinidad on a Friday, go Maria's Bakery. Ask for Simon. Tell Simon I said, I said, yeah. They go to you nice. And the staff, now they have two Maria's. They have one in South, but the one in town, the staff, real nice. Real nice people. Real nice people. And I'm saying to Trinidad, I, I want us to start back supporting each other. Buy in your community. Buy from the small shop. Buy from the mini mart. Buy from the independently owned grocery. Buy from there. Because when you buy from there, you put money back into circulation. Ten to one. When you're inside a small grocery, is there you're seeing all the local things that you want to get. Kurma, Tulum, Popo Balls, Shadok, all of that are available there that you're not getting in the big groceries. Because in the big groceries, the big suppliers run things. So it's M&M's and, and all that nonsense. But in the local or in the community stores, you get an it happening in the community. So everybody gets to win. We need to right-size this country by our labor, by our consumption and by our vote. Those three things. That is all the power. That's all the power. I will never end now. Today, I had a meeting in Starbucks. So I take that hit. If you're going to hit me, if you're going to hit me a cloud for that, I had to. Because that's where the person I was meeting was comfortable meeting. But I will never, ever, 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 ever support rituals, pizza boys. That I never again. He needs to do a grand gesture to the people of Trinidad Tobago. I send that message to my cousin. I say, tell him, if he really wants to appear that he is apologetic, run a week of free coffee. Coffee in a cup is 15 cents, you know. A pizza is three, four, five hundred percent markup, you know. You're telling him? It's flour and cheese. Go by the small bakery. Go by the one mom and pop or, or, or the couple or the man or the, or the woman that try and, they try and help them up, raise them up. Because chain stores, you know, have not been inside Massey since Tropical Storm Brett. And I said I will never go back. And I've not been since. And I've been buying from small stores, RTD Freighters in, on Mongoko Road. I might go see now. And I'm happy there. Because, because I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, in the years that I'm a customer for Massey. And the one time I needed you to return, reciprocate the relationship, you blank me. My mother I make no stupid picture. Huh? Yeah? People on the side of the road, roadside food and things, you had to give them support. You had to help them out. Build them up. Build them up. Help everybody stand up. We all together, one people under one flag. Let's do that. Let us tell each other. Let, let, let all of us tell each other, this is how we're doing it. When you could bank in credit union, bank in the credit union. Let's take away all of these people's perceived power to do us what they want. Because we don't have government or opposition that care about the people, obviously. I mean, what the banks do in the people of Trinidad Tobago, just that. Just that is a clear indication that we are not governed. We're advantaged. But that will change. That will change. Anyway. Kamala. Tell the nation on her pulpit that she just got a text that a kidnapping just occurred. And no kidnapping occurred. So she was sharing fake news. And Keith Rowley went to town on Kamala.
for sharing fake news, which is cool. Do you do? But Stuart Young, the minister of each and everything in the PNM now, put out a release. And I promise not to cuss. But let me tell you, I read this release and I just cuss. Because I can't believe the foolishness that the copy and paste media passing off to the public and they're not asking one question. Hear this, right? Hear this. So, Kamala, for your fake news, me swear with that. God, show the due diligence now. Call back and find out. So just, they say it's your boss, man. Government has filed a civil suit against former Housing Development Corporation, HDC Managing Director, Jerlyn John, and other former government officials regarding the $175 million sale of Eden Gardens after the land was initially valued at $52 million. Brother, go and she tell. In a press conference on Friday, Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General, Stuart Young, told media that the claims concern corruption, bribery, breach of contract, and a breach of fiduciary duty during John's tenure as managing director. I'm coming back to that paragraph and I'll show you why. I'll show you why. The claims allege, hear this, listen to this, eh? the claims allege that an evaluator attached to the commissioner, commissioner of valuations accepted a bribe to value the 50 acre property at 180 million, ignoring valuations provided by independent valuators, Lyndon Scott, who valued the property at 52 million. In 2012, I'm gonna give you a little background story, we're coming back. In 2012, the land was then purchased at 175 million, giving the impression of a $5 million discount. Young said the action was initiated in November 2016 by the HDC and the Office of the Attorney General against nine defendants, Julian John, Henkel Lal, Greg Davis, Peter Ford, Project Specialist Limited, former Commissioner of Valuations, Ronald Hirelal, Point Lisa's Park Limited, Anthony Sampat, and Patrick Soon Ting. He said in keeping with civil proceedings rules, the claim was not served at that time, but applications was made to the court or under granted orders to follow the money. Following this, the claim was filed on June 20, 2017, and included a tenth defendant, Everell Ross. Young said Ross, who was an officer at the Commissioner of Valuations, allegedly received a bribe to value the land at a higher figure compared to that of Lyndon Scott. This is where I want to cuss. The rest of this story has nothing to do with Acting Commissioner of Police Stephen Williams or Director of Public Prosecutions Roger Gaspard getting involved. There is no news of an arrest, of an investigation, of misbehavior in public office, of people going to jail. When they said, the claims concern corruption, bribery, breach of contract, and a breach of fiduciary duty during John's tenure as managing director, that means she and the company secretary supposed to be in jail. So Stuart Young is either an incompetent buffoon or he, this is fake news. Because Young said Ross, Everell Ross, who was an officer at the Commissioner of Valuations, allegedly received a bribe to value the land at a higher figure compared to that of Lyndon Scott. What he is saying is because of that bribe, it cost Trinidad and Tobago an extra $128 million that was stolen. This was a conspiracy to steal. You sit Riyad Mohammed on his backside for the whole weekend last weekend and lock him up in a holding cell for talk. But people give $128 million 
X, Rituals, Pizza Boy, CEO, Jolene John. Bring all of it together. You want to see you powerful? Powerful. Why is Jolene John not in jail? Who was the company secretary at the time? Why is that person not in jail? Why is Everett Ross not in jail? Stuart Young is either lying to the people of Trinidad and Tobago or Stuart Young is an incompetent buffoon and the commissioner of police need firing so urgently that we should send somebody on that mission. Please, just go and serve the pink slip. Sir, fire yourself. And I want to tell Trinidad and Tobago, eh? Stephen Williams is the man that fire yourself come from, you know. When you let me talk about fire yourself, it's because I stepped in to defend Stephen Williams, who had fired three people, three inspectors. And the outgoing ambassador to the United States said, that's not enough, fire yourself. And I said, brother, jurisdiction, have some decency. You don't have that authority. You are the United States of America. If you're talking about the drug trade, come and help. Because it is your consumption driving the drug trade. And I put myself in the thing. And I interact. I, to block. But, but, if this public release in the public space exists, an acting commissioner of police, Stephen Williams, did not send the fraud squad that just investigated Riyad Mohammed, where we put that boy on a $15,000 bail for a $200 offense. That same fraud squad didn't go and lock up Everett Ross. You have Lyndon Scott, $52 million evaluation. You have the Valuating Commission, $180 million. You have the sale document for $175 million. You have Jolene John dead to rights. What is going on in do what you like land? What is going on? And if that is not enough to fire these people, Stuart Young went into the parliament on the 30th of June. And I have a YouTube video, and I am sorry, because it is long, and it is his entire contribution. So it's in the Hansard. And it is in the Hansard. And I've taken a what this is what this is the gist. I wanted to play it for, for you, but I don't have the spot, so I will do it. I swear to you, Monday. What is the last UNC cabinet's response to Stuart Young's allegations that specific instructions were given that crime fighting equipment was not to be utilized, such as grabbers and jammers? audio video recording servers refusal to share info with UK law enforcement to prevent or identify drug runs facial recognition equipment his allegation was all this was, st was stopped by a top cabinet member with the inference that it was in order to allow politically friendly criminals to escape detect detection now they know me red crapo yellow crapo same hand full of rock soul same bucket of black disinfectant jam them with bleach it don't matter to me but you see this is why it's cuss Stuart Young went into the parliament and he said this under parliamentary privilege and casted aspersions against persons who could only have been one of three people I contacted all three I got on to two to say listen you have to answer for this because it was sent to me by a senior ex-government minister. And you know what I was told? That Stuart Young's information is incorrect. That if he go back into his own People National Movement's records, he will realize that Patrick Manning spent $800 million to buy this nation a dud. That the camera system that has been installed all through Trinidad for Chogum, that waste of time exercise. The cameras was a waste of time exercise too. A billion dollars. 20,000 houses, shorty boy. 20,000 houses spent to buy an $800 million camera system that cannot work with facial recognition software. They bought facial recognition software. They have the $800 million worth of cameras. The two things can't work together. So they switch it off. $20,000 worth of house hanging from the lamppost for Blackbird to build nests. And I ain't cuss yet. Stuart Young in the parliament gave them fake news. 
Is this public release about Julian John fact or fake news? And I tell Stuart Young, if this is a fact, then the Prime Minister, as chair of the National Security Council, has an obligation to the people of Trinidad and Tobago to publicly write the Commissioner of Police and demand that he arrests Julian John, the company secretary, and Evel Ross. Because if he does not do that, Keith Rowley, Stuart Young, and the Commissioner of Police will be brought into odium because of this release. It is either you broke the law or you didn't. And if you broke the law, somebody is either going to enforce the law or they don't. But stop playing the fool with Trinidadians. Stop it now. Stop playing the fool with the people of this country. If Jolene John, Evel Ross, and whoever was the company secretary, and I will know by the time we do our video again, whoever was the company secretary, if they are not arrested, if this file is not forwarded to the director of public prosecutions, because he said they initiated it in 2016, and it is now 2017, and they've been following the money, because they have a court order to follow the money. Why is the DPP not in the loop? Why is the DPP not in the loop? and take him before the court and charge him for an offense that if found guilty is a $200 charge but while you're on bail $15,000 but these people could steal $128 million and you say you have the evidence to prove it and nobody ain't get arrested yet Watch what I tell him here. Avoid me. Tell him eh? that fat belly bear back in there. Give my warning for me. about tonight as I have a little audience here. You see the political tantrums? I want to tell you, I have had girlfriends, I've had friends, I've had relationships, I have family members. And I know that it is impossible for human beings to agree on everything. We are going to disagree. Today I posted a picture of a police car that parked like a fool. 
He parked like a fool. If the police car came there and the other cars were parked like a fool, he has a duty of responsibility to set an example. He was not to join the fray. He is literally parked in the white line running through the center of the car and somebody, Adam Chinley and Cam share the picture, I put it up on my wall. And I said, those who are charged with enforcing the law have an extra responsibility to obey the law. And a woman came to the post and she told me that we have bigger fish to fry. And I explained to her how broken windows theory works. And what broken windows say is that if you treat small problems, when they are small problems, they do not grow into big problems and drown you. So that's why you treat all problems as a problem and you deal with it. You don't keep telling yourself bigger fish to fry because this is a nation that are frying no fish at all. So let me fry whatever fish in front of me. And then, because she don't want to give up, she point. She tell me, well, you discuss in your video. So you should be, and I said, but I am not an elected public. Nobody paying me. This is me on my Facebook. If nobody will watch me, it's me cussing myself. You gotta come and find my Facebook to watch my video. I ain't coming looking for you. So if it bothering you, switch me off. But she said, no, she know what to do come election time. And I say, but you see, that is, that is foolish. Because if you and I disagree on one issue, and that is enough for you to make such a foolish decision, I will, you were never, ever supporting me. You were never supporting me. Them. Get out! Rescue the country. Put them out the temple. They have been paid. Let's put our work and see together again. Put them out the calypso. Enjoy your free friend. Let's put our work and see together again. Sorry, one that went on in that Anthony Boudin show by showing people that it wasn't the entire Syrian community and it was just whoever was on that table doing the drizzling. And I said, Well, I didn't do it for y'all, but I did it for Trinidad because this is one people under one flag. And I grow up with people of every race and every creed and every culture. And I could tell you that they have no one race that you could say worse than the rest. None. All of we have the pluses and all of we have the minuses. So. Is a policy, geographic, a catastrophe. If they cannot vote, and you see it so, then your only hope is for them to go. If it is fabrication, these statements that they spout, when you're voting, vote them all, vote them all. If it is a frustration, does make you want to shout. Digs out and one bill Panama. Register and vote them all. All of them vote them all. Stick your finger and vote them all. All up to your elbow and reading. Put them out in Scarborough and in Bonus. And you see the people who want to come to me to tell me ad nauseum over and over and over that Trini go support you and then when it's time to vote the voting race, miss me with that. Okay, because this is a different time. And they had Kamala against the ropes for four for five years and keep rolling and get two. Manning was the first to feel the brunt of social media. I don't even think this government will make a full term. Trinidadia is not on nonsense anymore. And you know why they're loving up the Progressive Empowerment Party? It's not because of me. I tell her I'm not running for nothing. So they could attack me, they could decimate my character and my name. I don't bother me. Water on a duck back. But you know why they're loving up the PP? Because the Progressive Empowerment Party is giving them knowledge. People must come first. Information. by right. None of you are worse. Yellow, black, or white. Who shall there and clothes? Free movement and speech. A garden that grows. And, and one, one love for each. If it is that injustice. Out. Pack up and go. If it is an avarice, is all they seem to know. When you're voting, put them out. Put them out. If it is your politics, it's just a puppy show. When elections day come, all 
bandit must go. Register and Talking to our financer today, the finance PNM and UNC are the same. Straight to his face. I say I do not, we do not distinguish. We cannot tell the difference between bandits. We see no distinction between the PNM and the UNC. And we are going after all the people's money that was stolen. It is our intention. It is our plan. It is our promise. We intend to convene a team of, of people trained to do this. Forensic accountants, international attorneys. We are going to show Stuart Young how you follow the money. Our Minister of Foreign Affairs will call Panama and say, see them buildings? We will call Justin Trudeau in Canada. See them four skyscrapers at Trinidad Money Bill? We want it back. Put a valuation and pay Trini people back for the land. We might even go and knock on the Queen door. Whatever is the people money must come back. Must come back. That's what we promise. And I'm telling you all, that's what people loving about the PEP. We're not on nonsense. PNM can't call with UNC. UNC can't call with PNM. Red crapo, yellow crapo, same handful of salt. 682-2110. All you get a chance to call in and talk all the nonsense for a long time. So now is the time to talk some nonsense. It's a Friday night. Take me to task. 682-2110. Detractors, call in. I don't answer block numbers. So I'll see your phone number. So don't play come in as no fake profile. Come in. 682-2110. I answer in any question. Unless you all don't feel like calling me. In which case, we could play some music. Because I said everything I'm about to say, I have to say. Tomorrow, Saturday, 19 Stanmore Avenue. 500 people are viewing this video. Now I expect to see at least 500 people in 19 Stanmore Avenue tomorrow. Yeah? That's okay. We can expect that. I want 10,000 people in Santa Cruz. I don't know what I'm going to fit. But you got to come out. You got to come out. You got to come out. Nobody have money on their phone tonight. Though. It's 6 2 21 10. Let's do this. Apps, as I say that. Hello, good evening. You're live. Hey, good night, Mr. Alexander, sir. How are you, my friend? Yeah, man. I just called to the south. I just want to find out something. Where are you calling from? Uh, what comes the chunzi? What comes the chunzi? Yeah, well, what I'm saying, right? I'm what? saying, did you see What's that? What constituency you calling from? Right, calling from your grand, um, nice princess song. Right, continue. Prin yeah, Barry Potter, that is the man. Right, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, I'm watching the news these days, and what I'm saying, right, is I set up to talk about I want to Lego public servants, and uh, this trivially, I think, but the, the, the Minister of Finance came out and said that they have no intention because and the fact that they already paid the back pay in 2015 and whatever remain was paid in 2017. What could have happened in time to come when they got to pay back public service for the new period or the new set of negotiations if they're really going to wage cut or if they're going to let go workers? We need to because know. Because I mean to say, no, we need to... real, real men out there who kill any government service for real small money. Yep. Yes, and then all the set of new taxes and all these things. How men going to live? But is it true that they're going to bust government workers? Well, you and I hearing the same things. They talking, they talk. I heard, a, mm. I heard that the meeting um, for the Petrotrin report was had today, and the finance team met with the unions, and the unions talking about eighteen hundred workers, and the finance team talking about five hundred, and that's where the meeting broke up. So yes, this government has no plans other than to lay off people and tax. Call member is a joke. This government is a failure. We are to face that. Because if you, even if you come into office knowing that you do not have the money to run the country as it is, you have a responsibility to create job opportunities for people and seamlessly transition them while you deal with issues. Yes? Well, I agree with you on just, but it's like, like I say now, but everybody just studying the wrong set of things. I look what happened with the ship, it's sinking. And it's a good part. Nah, we are to take care of all people, brother. The, the two P's in Progressive Empowerment Party stand for people. We are the people's party, and we will make sure to take care of all the people. Our plan is one people under one flag. Thanks a lot for calling, yeah. my friend. Yeah, man, of course. Take care. 
Hello, good evening. You're live. Where are you calling from, please? We've got to just miss that call. I'm sorry about that. We do not have a switchboard. You all know this is all me trying to do all of this. Call in 682-2110. Have your say. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hello, Miss Alexander. Hello. I just episodes every night. Where, where are you calling from? Yes. Mr. Alexander, that's my daughter. This is Neil Mohammed. We're calling from Cuba. Neil, thanks a lot for calling and for having her call me. She caught me off guard. No problem, no you, problem. You I just, just want to give the, the viewers um, some, some information that we do have children locked on and I, I want to start just like how the CNM and the UNC supporters start on the children from young, I, I want to, to understand what's going on with our country because um, we have adults who set in their ways already and I want to give her the information and let her decide. Thanks a lot, my friend. I hope we see so, you tomorrow. You got any time off to come tomorrow? Uh, um, no, not, not, not particularly tomorrow, but I'm definitely going to come to the next one. Santa Cruz, see you next Saturday. All right, sure. Take care, my friend. Hello, good evening. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from London. Hi, good Hi, evening. Good night. What I'm time is it? In, what time is it in London? Um, it's now one forty-five. <laughs> and every night I listen to you. And good job, Kevin. Thank Wish you. Wish I was down there to support you. Thank you so much. I'll charge send you some money on a CRP. I'll do something. Thank you very much, my friend. Okay, bye bye. Nice bye -bye. talking to you. Thank you. Nice talking to you too. Bye. See the responsibility we have. Our foreign based trainees want to come home. We have a responsibility to fix this nation. In five short years, we could fix this nation. But you have to want it to fix. All the things we talk about, healthcare, food production, cost of living, home ownership. We could make home ownership a reality. Sell all those things that have our money tied up in it. Divest, shrink the economy. I spoke to people. One of the people I spoke to today is if, he, if I could get him interested in being our Minister of Finance. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Hello, good evening. Hello, good night. Hi, Mr. Alexander. Hi, where are you calling from? Hi. Diego Mata, representing Diego Mata. How are you going? So far, so good. Just want to tell you that you're doing a fantastic job and we have your back. Thank you very right? much. Man. We have your back. And well, they can't come and do your anything just so. We, we, once we can look out for you, we look out for you. Much appreciated, right? man. We support you. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day. Hello, good evening. You're live. Where are you calling from? Um, Gasparillo. Gasparillo, welcome aboard. Yeah, what, what my question is that if you get in power... Could you talk louder so the, visitor, so the viewers can hear you? If you get in power, what I'm saying, what would you do with the U.S. leaving the country? Because when we go to the bank... With the now, U.S.? You, with the U.S.? Yeah, with the U.S. We're well, we going to shut down the drug trade in this country. We going after the political bandits and the contractocracy that stole our money that trying to export it in US dollars. That's where our US going. Between stolen money and drug money, we know. And we will stop them dead in the tracks. The US will flow back into the economy natural and normal. Yes, because when you go to the bank with a plane ticket to travel to the US or wherever, madness. they only giving you 200 US. I know. I go into that too. It's madness. Yeah, it's total madness. Total like a couple madness. of years ago, you could have gone and get 5,000. Now you can't, now you're getting 100. They take 60. If you don't have a cut. They, they you thieves, need a credit card or a debit card to travel, right? They thief, now, they thief, they thief sixty billion dollars. They bury it in their backyard. They have it in all kind of vault under the house. They buying up the U.S. to ship it out. That's where the money goes. We will deal with that. Thanks a lot for calling, my friend. I think it's joke we joking. Hey, if you didn't get you, keep trying. Six eight two twenty one ten.
Good evening. Hello. How are you live? Good evening. Yes, uh, it's Boy, uh, I'm here from Toronto. Hi, Boy, how are you going? Good, man, good, good. So, Boy, I'm um, from, but, um, you, you know, you're keeping us updated as to what's going on. Uh, yeah. uh, boy, you, your connection, uh -huh. you, you have a bad connection. You want to try me back? Oh, uh -huh. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hi, good night, Philip. This is Lema. Hi, Lema. How are you going? I'm good. Good night, all viewers. You've called to update us on stuff or you just feel like calling? No, I just start my calling. Of course, everybody, please come on down tomorrow to our meeting, 19 Samuel Avenue. But I just wanted to, a, a couple of times I mind wanted to know what the plan PEP has for local government in terms of the flooding issues. Well, um, we've said before that we intend to ev eradicate local government and empower the constituencies, and, the right. and 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 give each constituencies a, each constituency a board of directors that includes a secretary of public works and a secretary of public utilities, all answerable to a chairman, and that should be able to control and deal with issues that affect systemic issues and historic issues, because they would know because we we assume that they're going to elect people from within the community who would have an idea as to what's been going on all these years. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing, the um, a lot of um, people are public servants, so they want to know if they would be losing their jobs or keeping their jobs. You know, I'm a public servant as well, so I need to know my, my future plan. Thank you. Okay. You want me to answer you off or you stay? No, off. Okay. off so. Thanks a lot, Leno. That's the, right. as the head of our finance team. Um, let me just deal with that quickly. How this government is treating with people is wrong you cannot treat with people like that you have to if you have to fix you go into austerity measures does not mean that you just cut the people loose we have <laughs> hello good evening you live hello hi good evening you live yeah listen, you hear me yes listen to me on the phone not on the device because there'll be a delay Hello? Hi, listen to me on the phone and on the device because there'll be a delay, okay? <laughs> Hi, my name is Sally and I'm calling from New York. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm just calling to tell you we here in New York support you and we think you're doing an awesome job. Thank you very much for that. I feel if I run for elections in New York, I could win. We have a big following. I, I if we could have vote from here, we vote for you from here. We have a Trini mayor of New York named Ali G, you know. Track her down on the thread and let her know that you're there because she organizing all the Trinis in New York. All right, well, we'll track that woman now. Don't worry. Ali we're G, on your team. Ali G is her name, and thanks so very much for calling. You're welcome. Everybody have a good night. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Hello, good evening. You're live. Where are you calling from, please? Hi, um, this is Andrew again, Philip. But we having some problems technically because my phone not picking you up on Facebook and your um, page. We were working on that right now. So. Thanks a lot for that heads up. Uh, Hello, good evening, you live. Hello, good evening. Right. Lemma asked about the public servants, and I want to answer that. Hello, good evening, you live. Hello. Hello. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Philip. I'm calling you from Scotland. From where? Um, from Scotland. Scotland. Scotland in the UK. I love your accent. <laughs> oh, sorry about the accent. Sorry, this happens. I need to speak to a Trini. So no, I that, no but I'm, I swear I'm loving it. I love that accent. Anyway, but, but yeah, I hear it. No, I hear it, your Trininess. Continue. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that. No, um, right. I actually love what you're doing. You are doing a fine job, but I have a couple of questions that I have missed. I don't know whether you've addressed them and I've just missed it. I noticed that a lot of people in Trinidad are employed by the government on um, 
short-term contracts. And this is why we're actually seeing a lot of people employed, unemployed as a result of these short-term contracts. Have you addressed this at any point in your... Yeah. Um, we are addressing the issue. We, we've, we've said that... You want me to answer it while you're on the phone or off the air? Because Lima asked the question, I was going to answer it just as I answered the phone for you. You have anything else okay, you'd like yeah, to add? Because I'll answer. I have that. one. Yeah. If if you could address it off the phone, but I want one more thing that I want. I also didn't hear you speak on, which is the, the issue that we seem to have a high number of immig immigrants into Trinidad now, um, and what your policy regarding immigration is going to be. I'll answer that first, and then get back to the workers. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Okay. Have bye -bye. a good night. Th thank you. You too. Oh my God. Hello. Good evening. You're live. Hi, good night, Philip. Hi. Hi, I'm calling from Faisalabad. I've been a great follower for you for some time now. Um, I just wanted to probably bring up the fact that our public health care system is really failing us right now. And it's really unfortunate because I recently had a friend who had a baby in the hospital and they didn't have the medication that she needed. And thank goodness that I was there. Um, I went and I got her the medication that she needed, and I don't think it's right that we are paying help. Um, we are putting into the, the into the help. Five paying these billion, taxes. five billion dollars a year being spent on healthcare. Seventeen mm -hmm. million mm -hmm. dollars a day. And and the service is absolutely atrocious. And the beyond we, atrocious. Yeah, and and it's, I I honestly don't know what to say about it anymore We're going because. To fix that. We're going yeah, to fix I, that. I promise you we're going to fix that. 41... It's, it's, I, I, I won't lie to you. It's really scary, no, especially for, you know, I mean, women who are coming into the, into the healthcare system. I mean, anyone actually, but most of the women, especially because I have seen the treatments and stuff that, you know, that would have gone on, and it's like, what is going on? It's insane. Is insane, but we're gonna deal with that because we have a strong plan for 41 autonomous health constituency health centers 24 hours a day with accident and emergency dedicated ambulance minor surgery suite 24 hours a day that will treat with and deal with all of the people in the constituency set up to run and 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 outfitted for specifics for that constituency so that is our plan and then we can right size the rest of the major hospitals we're we going to privatize we're we going to insure the people we want first world treatment if in exchange for that insurance anybody earning less than a hundred thousand dollars a year the state will provide the insurance anybody who's earning more than a hundred thousand dollars a year will contribute to it for their own national insurance but that will include dental ophthalmology it will include the full suite of everything that a citizen of a republic should be entitled to and yeah. that's great i i i fully support you yeah. and again calling from Pfizer, from no, but I want to let you know that plan flooded. when people hear that plan they ask me how much that costs and that actually will cost half of what we spend on healthcare now you know we spend five billion dollars we're spending 6.25 billion this year we're gonna mm -hmm. deal with it Thanks, thanks a lot for calling Faisal. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, good evening. You're live. Yes, sir. Is this Philip? Yes, it is. Yeah, Philip. I'm calling from New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey, United States. Yeah. Welcome aboard. I, I, I would like to... Yes, sir. I, I follow you every night, you know. I follow you every night. And... Um, you know, sometimes I don't get you during the week. Like this time, this week, I only get you like once. So I don't know if you had a problem. No, no, we on every night. To no, on. We on every night. There's an actual YouTube channel. It is backed up. The person is based in the state. She's in Michigan. And it's backed up with a YouTube channel. Track down the YouTube channel on my wall and subscribe to it. So even if you miss the Facebook Live, you could find it on my wall. Or you can go to the YouTube channel and it'll be there. All of our videos... Oh, okay. All of our videos are archived on that YouTube channel. Uh, okay, thanks for letting me know that. But I have another question for you now. If you get into power and become the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, what would you do like with uh, with Kamala and Keith Rowley and Basde Pande and all these people and like Patrick Mann and wife and children and Erica Williams, these people who 
give the family money and store it into America, you know, what would you do? Because I used to live in um, Trinidad 25 years ago, and I left and come to the States. And I used to go to school in El Socorro, in Samo, a wrong way, Naim, Naya, and Teddy Mice around that area. And at that time, at 10 years old, they, I used to see police officers, you know, into drugs, and, and all, all the time was Randolph Burroughs used to be involved in there. And going in there and making the deals and putting the drugs in the school block, inside a little uh, red block, and, and stuck in it and selling it. And, you know, well, he was living, he was living right across from the school, El Socorro in the school there. And it was really, really horrible. So I would really like to know, like, what you're going to do if you get into power, if you're going to, you know, get back the money for the people, for Trinidad and Tobago to support, you know, back the country and gonna, have everything going back the way. You're going to listen off the phone, right? To the response? Huh? You will listen, yeah. you will listen off the phone to the response, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So, and okay. thanks for calling. Um, right, Limmer and Scotland, those, that question is going to be answered. This is going to be dealt with now. Straight answer. We intend to get back the people's money. You call names. I wasn't even going to call names. Once they, once they stole the people's money, we're going back for the people's money. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hi, good evening. You're live. Could you speak up, please? Hi. Hi, good evening. Could you speak up at all? Is it possible yes. for you to speak, Laura? Is this Mr. Alexander? It is. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Alexander. I'm a resident in North Carolina. Hi. Um, in the U.S. And um, about three or four weeks ago, I began looking at your, your broadcast. And um, it is certainly encouraging from somebody who has been the victim of terror in Trinidad, physical terror in the 1970s uprising, and again in the 1990s situation, um, based on my family background. But um, <clears throat> at my age now, I'm a, I've acquired uh, several skills that I think can be put to the disposal of your organization, and um, in a volunteer fashion, of course. But um, I'd like at some point to be able to discuss it with you. Absolutely. Could I ask you to send me a message on Facebook privately off there so we could begin a conversation as to how you could get involved? Yeah, by all means. Thank you very much for that. North Carolina. And, and keep, the, keep, keep the ball rolling. Thank you, my friend. Um, rain falling, they gotta, they got to go find the umbrella now. Thank you for that. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Right. Illegal aliens in Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm not talking about from outer space. Oh my God, the phone. Okay, that one didn't make it. Illegal aliens, illegal immigrants. At the end of the day, there are people who've been here for a while, people who married, people who have families. We have to regularize some people. We got to send some people Hello, home. Alexander. Hi, good evening. I am calling from Florida, Hi. and I enjoy watching your show every night. Thank you. Um, now, you've spoken early in the week about the 30,000 plus guns that they've reported in the country, and that is extremely dear to my heart, because I had an uncle in 1991 that was assassinated coming out of his driveway. I am also family to Mr. Chinese Laundry that was an assassination attempt on his life a few years ago. Um, one of the things that have, has come to my mind in a way of dealing with the guns and getting people who own the homes where the guns are at is you get caught with guns in your house, your house is confiscated by the government. You get caught with guns in your car, your vehicle is confiscated. You know, Drugs in your house, confiscated. Well, I think that if you're, you're right. A I think no, but I think that you're right. But I want to tell you this: you would yeah. need to escalate the tactics to that 
in a in a situation like we have now because the government is not enfor- the, 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 the authorities are not enforcing anything at all but we will change that because our gun policy and our illegal gun policy first we're going to shut the nation's borders with a maritime security wall and then we're going to give them a no questions asked three months surrender your illegal firearms after that if you're caught with it go to jail go directly to jail do not pass go police officers will be given rewards to collect pistols and rifles and thousand dollars five thousand dollars they bring it in they only police officers will be entitled to those rewards and we will pay until and we'll buy until we get them all off the streets i i heard that in your in your report and i agree with that but as a mother or a father with a 20 year old kid or 18 year old kid that has a gun in my house i'm not losing my house because you bringing a gun into my house because of the stupidness you're doing so parents are going to literally be like get that out of my house i don't want it here and they're not going to cover the kids as much as they are I mean, if you you three months ago you don't you have a gun. Parents, nobody wants to lose their house. That's the biggest investment most people in their life have is their home. I understand. Right at any level. I understand, so and another, I understand. I, another added input into it. And I, it's very close to me because I've lost family members. And, of and that's what I want to say because. The listeners are going to think that a lot of your it sounds a little draconian but i understand where you're coming from because of your loss your lost family members and it must that must be hurtful and i agree with you but i promise you this a progressive empowerment party government will make gun ownership a frightening situation nobody going to want to be caught with a gun i promise you that thank you thank you i applaud what you're doing i hope that all of the citizens in Trinidad put any effort towards getting themselves in a better position. Thank you, it's going to take a country to get forward. I Not want... The government. The I government want, is a part of it, but all individuals need to help. I want all the foreign-based trainees too, a mass exodus back to Trinidad to vote and to help us rebuild this country. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for that quote. Illegals, yes. Some have to be regularized, some have to be sent home. Let's stop playing games. If they cannot be regularized, if you cannot bring them into fully functional, tax-paying citizens, send them where they come from. That's that. With regards to the public servants, I've said this, I say it again. We have ambassadors and high commissioners. What's their job? What's their job? To go abroad and dance? This is would be, if you're a high commissioner or ambassador under the Progressive Empowerment Party, you would have a constant function, either sell Trinidad business to the world or bring world investments to Trinidad. We will be a strong business footing government. We will create facilities for businesses, overseas especially, to come and set up here. And we will give them tax breaks and other breaks, so that as, and, but there must be businesses that employ our people. And we will put our people to work. We we'll put our people to work. We're going to get agriculture and tourism up and running to what they're supposed to be. And we're going to use things like the Intech Park that was built with hundreds of millions of the people's money. Do you know that we have $30 billion in houses that we could get back? Just sell all to the people living in the house. So if you is a PNM or a UNC and you get 16, do you know there are people in the HDC that own 5, 10, 15 houses? HDC houses where we are bust your throat quick because whoever living in the house is the person who's going to get the opportunity to buy the house and if they don't have a job and can't buy the house they'll have to vacate and straight talk all pots stand up on their own bottom if you are for some reason disabled to the point where you cannot work there's a social development ministry which will be handling our housing policy and they will identify the people in genuine need of a state house and there would be state house facilities for that. So we will deal with that. We will make sure none of our people need to squat. What you need is to get yourself gainfully employed. There is a minimum wage. Our policy is set to respect the minimum wage. On $100,000 at 0% down, zero interest for 30 years, your payment is $337 a month. If you cannot make that, well, you're in trouble. Time for people to get responsible. Don't think that this is socialist government. We are going to make sure we give everybody a hand up. We ain't giving nobody a hand out. We want all our money back. We want to develop the country. We want to do the things that need to be done. We want to build a new government city in the center of the island. We have to build highways to get it and roads. That will cost money. We're moving the port. We're building the Gold Coast. We're moving the Dilabas and building a commercial district. A lot of work to be done. 
a lot of work to be done. We need our money. All those contracts, all those fly by night and and, and friends and and uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I think that's it for the callers. Um, tomorrow we are in Stanmore Avenue at noon, and next week Saturday we are in yeah. Santa Cruz at six o'clock. Again, I want to say a special thank you to the team that runs the Progressive Empowerment Party. Lima call in tonight. She's the head of our fundraising team. You see her on the wall? Reach out to her and help in any way that you could. We're we, we building a party. That's not that ad, somebody asked me what one I was that you Hello, good evening, you're live. Good night, sir. This is Lani. How are you doing, darling? Hey, the mayor of New York. How are you going, babe? You better be here yourself to that. <laughs> no, well, I'm telling you, I don't know what work you're doing, but they have more supporters in New York than anywhere else. So i just telling you, I'm acknowledging the job that you're doing, ma'am. Now listen, and New York, obvious, Philip, New York is PEP country. We're ready to mobilize. I just, I, oh. I called because I want to talk to the New York people. Nice. What I want to say to New York is, New Yorkers, or they hear Philip, or they hear any policies, or they see the, the promise that children are going to say they can become. We need to mobilize. We need to get together. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, whatever we, co we collected for the food and the um, the clothing drive, if we are going to be at the power plant between 9.30 and 11, we have to finish that by 11. Anybody who wants to contribute to the shipping core, please inbox me. If they want to bring anything, meet me by the power plant, like we say, 9 to 11. New York, uh, New York, please inbox me. We need to organize, we need to get this thing together. We have a leader in Philip. I ain't want to hear no conversation, but here, this is uh, Philip, with the man. You get the job, and be behind you. Good night to everybody. Thank you, my friend. Thanks a lot for that. That's our representative in New York City, Ali G. She's busy on the threads, as you can see. She's keeping you all updated. Right now, she's single-handedly running the, the New York outreach and a lot of the foreign-based Chinese who are actually packing stuff to ship for the people who lost in the flood that Shamla Maraj and Felicia Hola, our chairman, is coordinating and Lima and Raphael and the rest of the team. So that is coming down. They're getting ready to pack it tomorrow to ship it down. We have some more stuff in the office. I know. I saw that they, they, they took pictures. So I guess there's going to be, an, when that stuff comes, I'm sure Shamla and Felicia and I'm going to organize to take it on the road and especially so that Ali and the people in New York City who did that good work collecting it would see that it's been put in good hands. Yeah? See if you're registered on the, you can go on the website, the EDC website and look for your name and address. If you don't see it, go and get your ID card. And yeah, my brother-in-law mentioned that and I need to bring it up again. Please go and get, go and get your ID cards. Make sure that you're registered. Good evening, Mr. Osuna. How are you, sir? Philip Edward Alexander, boy. I am fine. I hope you're in the office. In the wilderness, crying. I hope you're in the office tomorrow at noon. No, 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 no. I don't work tomorrow. I do have a, I do have a choice. I can't make it tomorrow. I, I rusted to work. All right, all right. So, all right, and as much as I would like to avoid work until better can be done, that is the situation. Right. But I will be there in spirit, you know that? Just make sure you touch, you base, know, touch base with Dave and make sure everything under control. Yeah, yeah, I touched base with him already. And um, so, next week, Saturday. The thing is, I, I was working yesterday evening and I, and I went on the live while while I was mobile. So, <laughs> I shared any Bluetooth in the, in the vehicle now. One of my colleagues said, hey, you know how long I'm looking for a link with that man? 
Mm-hmm. Somebody sent me a video of in a red jersey boy. And I hear that man, he bleed in them, man, and he gain them left, right, and center. I like him too bad. <laughs> You're evangelizing. <laughs> You're evangelizing. <laughs> he was in the middle of Forest Reserve, and the reception was going and coming. But what was consistent is that the fact that he kept singing a prison, and he said for the longest while, he looking at that one little eight-minute video for the longest while, I wanted to know more, but he, he didn't have the information. So coincidentally, I put it on, and then he get the information and decided that he wanted to get more information so that he would follow. And he's from New Grant. Good job, my So brother. the word is spreading, the word Good is job, spreading. And, and like I told you before, there are a lot of people in the Southland who are interested in doing the meeting. So as we progress, I would just, you know, link you all with them and... Well, we, we have a lot of people. Good work. We have a lot of people reaching out with venues for, and I know Felicia and the team working on that. Vanessa, we have a lot of people reaching yeah. out. Um, Tony, the fool. Um, yeah, Nigel, that was with, in penal. Want your bad? Well, Nigel, that was in that was the comparison. Make, the make it happen. I have to try that. I'll it just happen. suggest it because. You song like me when you talk about the Chana soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want not for the longest one. I like the real Chana gone. I like which is these people really giving nah, up. That the dollar have more substance. But anyway, let me go. We will talk on us here. Yeah, so, well, you know how to call it because the entire week gone and I ain't cold. Well, and then I only get little bits and pieces because of how I'm working. So, yeah, but, 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 and I really, 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 really miss last week and I know I'm going miss tomorrow, but I'll be there in spirit. And next and week, Saturday for Santa Cruz, you have to be there for that. Yes, yes, I'll be there for Santa Cruz because I work in the morning, so I'll be there. I'll be free in the evening. All right, my mother. So I'll get up to Santa Cruz pretty early. Talk to you. I'll talk to you. So soon. we're looking forward to that. And I think you know I'm very vocal, and you know all your support. You know I, I, I no, have your back. You're not my friend. You, but once you're keeping it real with me, you know I just keep it real with you. Use the main evangelist, brother. You do the job. Do follow me. <laughs> Stop that, Philip. Take you care. have a nice day. Enjoy the weekend. Take care. You too, my brother. All right. One people under one flag. They could tell you what they want. They could cry blood. I want to tell you something. A trini. Once you born and grow in trini, no matter the color your skin or where you come from, no north and south video and all this nonsense. Trini people is trini people and we have one way. Nice, decent, loving people. And that is what I don't want to leave. That is what we're fighting to save. We are unique we are unique on planet Earth because all them foreign-based Trinis could tell you in some of them places there's dog better than you if you don't have money in your pocket. At least in Trinidad, you could stop by a corner. Everybody I know know a vagrant that they just talk to. We are a good, kind, decent, loving people. We've been abused. We've been advantaged. We've been misled. We've been, we've been, we've been taken advantage of by two political parties masquerading as leadership and that after done. That after that, the man tell you when you're voting, vote them out. We went a little longer than normal tonight because I really wanted to give everybody the chance to call in and, and have their say. Tomorrow, Maya, who handles our social media outreach now, she's trying, she's working with me to get the YouTube, so we're going to do a beta test tomorrow that we're supposed to have tonight. So, yeah, and thank all of you for being with us tonight. Those of you who can make it tomorrow, noon, Stanmore Avenue, please come. Please be on time because we start bang on noon. Um, So come down tomorrow. I'm getting a message from one of the team members. Let me just see if it is something that I have to share with you. And it is... Right. So we're going to be testing YouTube right through. That's what that was about. So that said... Hope you all enjoy your weekend. The next time you see me live is Monday, God Spare Life. Between now and then, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago. And if you can come tomorrow, bring the family, bring the friends, bring the neighbors. If you are a stay home and crochet, you can come and crochet in the office. 19 Stanmore Avenue, we're there at noon. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.